Belt Analyst 14 has some major new features that should increase efficiency in your design process and make it easier to customize your conveyor based on your specific needs. SEMA recently released the seventh edition of the Belt Conveyors for Bulk Materials, which includes some significant changes to the power calculations. Belt Analyst version 14 incorporates these new methods. When you first open Belt Analyst, SEMA 7 will be the default calculation method. Two major changes in SEMA 7 are the calculation of the belt indentation drag and the modified seal drag temperature multiplier. Under the belt tab, three different top and bottom cover rubber types can now be chosen from a drop down menu. Try selecting these different rubbers to see how this affects the power requirements. Also, SEMA has greatly changed the way temperature affects idler drag. The temperature multiplier is located in the idler table at the very bottom. Please refer to the SEMA book for specific calculations and explanations. As some of these changes are significant, Overland Conveyor will also provide a separate, more detailed training video on the new SEMA 7 calculation methods. We do suggest that you replace any projects that use SEMA 6 with the SEMA 7 method. To do this, simply open a project, change the calculation method to SEMA 7, and save. If you feel strongly about keeping SEMA 6 as an option, or would like to change the default calculation for new projects, click on Defaults, then General. Click on the Calc Methods tab and you will see the available calculation methods that will be available in Belt Analyst. A check mark next to the method indicates if it is an option within the program. You can also select your default calculation method from the drop-down menu. A very important new outcome from the new SEMA power changes is the effects of temperature on the total demand power requirements of many conveyors. In many cases, the highest power demand will not be the lowest operating temperature, as we have always been taught. This often happens because rubber indentation can start going back down at extremely low temperatures. This means you must search for the worst case temperature per application. In order to automate this new requirement, a power wizard button has been developed and added. It is located next to the temperature input on the right hand side of the screen. This feature allows the user to test a range of temperatures to automatically find worst cases. Along with temperature, two sets of multipliers associated with the three main sources of drag, which are idlers, alignment, and belt rubber, have been added to reflect possible tolerances in actual versus actual manufactured components and installation. This wizard shows you your full range of possible power requirements very quickly. After completion, Power Wizard shows the high and low power values and allows the user to select either set of values and temperature to be brought into the current case. To do this, click the Update Highest Power Case or Update Lowest Power Case at the bottom right hand corner of the window. A tab exclusion feature has been added to version 14. Adding cases to check for high and low power requirements is very powerful, but sometimes you may wish to ignore red warnings on vertical curves or other components during rare cases. For example, if you wanted to size vertical curves for the base case only, since this is where the conveyor will run 99% of the time, you could create a new case and block the vertical curves tab. To block a tab, simply right click it and select Exclude Vertical Curve Warnings. The red warnings still exist in the individual calculations, but you will notice the tab is grayed out and has an X through it, and the case warning is also gone. If a tab is excluded, a new row will be added to the top of the table, labeled Exception Explanation. This allows the user to input comments as to why the tab was excluded. This explanation is printed out on a page in the case summary printout. If you decide that you want to include the tab again, just right click and click Include Vertical Curve Warnings. Please note that tab exclusion does not work in the base case. 
a new case summary button has been added to the case manager strip. If you have two or more cases, this button will appear automatically. When you click this button, a new window will pop up that shows all of your cases side by side. There will be images on the right half of the window and you can add and remove images as well as reset and close the form. To add an image, select which view you would like from the drop down menu and select add image. You can also right click in the image space and click add image. A blank space will be inserted and you can choose to show which option you would like. If you click the Remove Image button in the top left-hand corner, the image at the bottom of the screen will be deleted. You can also right-click an image and select Remove Image to delete it from the image space. The Reset and Close Form button will reset the window to the default images, which are the profile and the tension diagrams, and close the form. If you close the form without resetting the images, the case summary will save the changes you made and reopen the window how you left it. Version 14 also comes with three new idler databases called DIN 6200, DIN 6300, and DIN 6400. These databases select idlers that meet the German DIN specifications with 6200, 6300, and 6400 bearings. Additional databases can be developed and added on request. Under the Idler tab, there is a new row in the table called Percent Reliability for 50,000 hours. This addition has been added to show the percent reliability of the idler based on the user requested life. In this case, 50,000 hours has been set in the defaults, but it can be changed based on your project requirements. The idler is still selected based on the lowest L10 life, but the overall carry and return idler reliability is back calculated. Click Edit then Customize Defaults. Click on the Idlers tab, and you can change the minimum bearing life value for either the individual file or for the whole program. The Angular install tolerance can now be entered in degrees as well as in inches or millimeters. Input the misalignment number, and Belt Analyst will calculate the misalignment angle. If you enter the angle, Belt Analyst will calculate the number. Although the old program used the number exclusively, we recommend using the angle now as it will better adjust misalignment based on the belt width. When you save your Belt Analyst project, it will now be saved as an AN2X file instead of an AN2 file. Version 14 will read both AN2X and AN2 files. AN2X files are now written in XML format, which will make our files more versatile and compatible with other programs in the future. A new page has been added to the Belt Analyst printouts. The last page of the printout will show all of the case exceptions in the project. It will list which case the exception is under, as well as the tab and any notes that you entered into the table. Team Manager has also received some modifications in version 14. When you first open Team Manager, you can see the browser now opens with all the folders and connections collapsed to help reduce clutter. The text buttons in the menu bar have been changed to icons, which are Connect to Team Manager, Refresh Connections, Clear Team Manager, and Check in Current File. The Open and Collapse folder icons have also changed. Project icons have also been modified so that locked projects are grayed out and a checked out project has green text and a green check mark next to it. Team Manager now has double click capabilities to check out or view a project. It also has AN2X support and does not rename the horizontal curve files upon check-in. Dynamic Analyst has also been updated in version 14. SEMA 7 and DIN calculation methods can now be utilized while running Dynamic Analyst. The actual FEA solver has also been rewritten in a more advanced language, which eliminates some annoying problems with file names and folder paths. For the most part, 
This significant upgrade will be invisible to you, but one big advantage is you no longer need to worry about special characters and file names or folder paths getting too long. And you will notice the old black simulation box is gone and the speed is better. You will start seeing increased speeds in the near future. For now, the speed increase is allowing us to reduce the time steps to half what you would have previously seen as defaults, which provides more stable results in most simulations. Our non-linear SAG algorithms have also been improved, so you should expect to see some differences in results when your belt tensions get low. You might notice lower belt tensions and higher SAG values than you have in the past. This upgrade has been made to better reflect real-life field experience. Also, the control arrays for characterizing your brake and drive controls have been upgraded. You no longer have to make sure the time increments between control steps and the number of time steps are the same between drives and or brake locations. This is a major improvement in usability. And if you haven't tried it yet, improvements have been made in automatically simulating between load cases transferred from belt analyst. Set your stopping and starting control algorithm for the base case. Then just click to the next case and click simulate. You will quickly see if the same algorithm will work for each load case. This saves a ton of time. There have been some simplifications made to the way you upgrade to the latest version of our software. If you are currently running version 13 and your MES is up to date or has an expiration date after April 1st of 2014, you will have the option to upgrade to version 14 automatically. The setup file will install version 14 in its own folder. Both version 13 and 14 can reside and run on your computer at the same time without having to deactivate and reactivate your license. When you are happy with version 14, uninstall version 13. If you have a floating license, you can also run both version 13 and 14 on your computer, but if you run them at the same time, they will pull two licenses in your floating pool. If you are currently running version 13 and your MES expired before April 1st of 2014, you can install version 14 and run it as a 30-day trial without interfering with version 13. If you choose to renew your MES to get the version 14 license, once the expiration date has been updated on our server, version 14 should recognize it and run the next time it opens. If you are currently running a version 12 or earlier, please contact us for instructions. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact Overland Conveyor.